Good afternoon, everyone. Today we are here to talk about the game that has just changed with Instagram messaging automation opening up for business. The art of possible is now beyond stories, posts, and DMs to a complete customer experience life cycle that can be executed on Instagram Messenger. Instagram messaging now offers a personal connection at every phase of the customer journey from discovery, engagement, commerce, and support. And it now helps managing high volumes of customer messages, making it easier and helping to turn conversations into business outcomes. Integrating with CRM inventory and other channels for a holistic engagement view, triage inquiries based on user and inquiry type and route accordingly to automate workflows for common inquiries, increasing efficiency for agents to handle in inquiries on Instagram without redirecting to another channel with customer care um, on, a, on a private reply. And in order to discuss about how the market and the industry is looking at this change, we are here today with an elite set of panel and it's my privilege now to introduce the panel to all of you. So we have Ekta Agarwal here from Meta Instagram. She leads the strategic product partnership for Instagram and is a driving force behind Instagram messaging adoption in India. Yes, we also have Shreya, Shreya Sachdev, Head of Marketing at Puma India. Hi everyone. We have Pragati Rana, uh, SVP Strategy, Experience Transformation at Isobar India. Hello guys, hi. We have Samyukta Ganesh Ayer, VP and Head of Marketing at Kaya Limited. Hi everyone. I think there's some problem with my video, but I should be visible soon. <laughs> All right. Hope, hope to see you soon, uh, yes. Samyukta. <laughs> yeah. We have uh, Shradul Beshtia, here, CMO of Modi Naturals. Hi, thanks Neil for the introduction. Hi everyone. Welcome, Shadul. And we have uh, Kartik Nagrajan, uh, Chief Content Officer at Wavemaker. Hey, Neil. Hi, everyone. So welcome to all the panelists. And uh, without wasting any more time, I'll get into the, the set of queries, points, questions that we all have and would want your thoughts on it. Um, <clears throat> primarily to talk about... Um, the importance of uh, Instagram messaging. Um, now, my first question, since we already have somebody from Instagram on this panel, so I will route my first question to Ekta uh, and maybe then take this question to the other panelists. So Ekta, uh, how do you think brands and target groups on Instagram, um, for them, how the priority has changed over the last few years and why? Uh, thank you so much, Neil, for directing the first question to me. Uh, happy to take this up. I know like when Instagram was initially founded in 2010, it was majorly a picture sharing platform. Uh, but since then, it has been revolutionized and has seen like a lot of emerging trends. And apart from that, a lot of consumer brands are now born on Instagram. So that's the major change which we have seen over time. Uh, with the stats, keeping in mind, 90% of the people on IG follow a brand and they feel that uh, two thirds of them feel that they can interact with the business on IG. And that's the first platform they use it for interacting. That's amazing to hear. Uh, in this pandemic, uh, I am sure the things have changed. The businesses have shut down. We have seen call centers closed. People are shifting to the work from home environment. Uh, now people are turning message tuned to messaging to get in touch with the businesses. But now the businesses have also changed. They are fast tracking and going digital. 
just to connect with these people over messaging. And I think like this momentum is continued even now, uh, where both big, small businesses are using messaging as a key to connect with their customers across their journey. A very, very simple example, which I could see in our daily life is when being a mother uh, of a one-year-old child, I was majorly most of my queries browsing is nowadays for searching and making the life easier for me. Uh, while doing so, I came across a brand uh, where people or the mothers were talking about how it has made changed in their life or how it has made their lives very easy. Just because I was trying to message them and interact with them on time when I actually needed them, uh, I am now a loyal customer of theirs. So that's how Instagram messaging is changing their lives. And I know like it's from browsing to scrolling. Now it has more become to talking and purchasing on Instagram. So yeah, that's it. Thanks, thanks, Ekta. Uh, so yes, there we have a story of uh, uh, <clears throat> brands making an impact on Instagram, um, and uh, it's it's going beyond just engagement, going all the way from from care to commerce. So so I'll I'll take this this question to Shreya uh, from a from a brand's lens. How have you seen this evolution on Instagram happening? Sure. Um, so I think, you know, Ekta covered it when she said um, Instagram as a platform has gone through a myriad of changes. Um, and I think for us as a brand, um, it pretty much exists in every part of the consumer funnel, right? So uh, given that most people are on Instagram today and spend quite a few hours there, um, I think awareness and reaching out to new audiences that are not captive audiences becomes a huge priority for us, right? So um, Instagram's targeted consumer advertising helps us to reach out to people who have not shopped with us before, probably do not follow and engage with us regularly. Um, so I think first and foremost, from an awareness and widening the, the top of the funnel, I think um, Instagram plays a really important role. Um, of course, with the way the platform has changed, we've also seen that Instagram has now become sort of a product discoverability platform, right? So uh, with your Instagram shop, you can put your latest products and, uh, you know, as a brand, of course, we cater to various kinds of audiences right so you, you have the running and the training audience you have the yoga audience you have the lifestyle audience um, you have the sports fan right and we need to um, ensure product visibility and availability for all of them so I think product discoverability um, uh, is also where we use Instagram um, you know in a, in a very strong way and I think finally you know post purchase as well um, engaging with the same consumer that has shopped with us before becomes extremely critical right um, and there again you would leverage a platform like Instagram to continue to engage with them. Um, you know, that can be through, you know, interesting content, the various features that uh, Instagram has as a platform right now, whether it's a live or, or, or reels or, um, you know, the various myriad features, but also, you know, in terms of uh, people will constantly drop a comment saying, uh, you know, customer query, hey, where can I you know, get this product, what, what's the status of my refund, what's the status of my order. Um, so I think pretty much every part of the consumer funnel is where we would leverage a platform like Instagram today. Very interesting points there. Uh, thanks for thanks for sharing that, Shreya. So uh, touching upon with the consumer at every part of the of the consumer life cycle, uh, we've seen a, a lot of uh, a lot of impact happening in the in the health and beauty segment with um, the Instagram messaging opening up, and uh, uh, I would I would like to take this this question to Samyukta. And uh, now that we we are able to see you, so the so the question is is now to to you in terms of um, the importance of Instagram messaging. Uh, how has you changed the the priority? I mean, how have you seen the priority change from a brand's lens? Yeah. So. I think I would like to um, mirror a lot of things that, uh, you know, Ekta and Shreya were also talking about. Uh, for us, particularly Instagram has been a blessing in disguise because uh, the kind of business that we are in, I don't think there's any other business that kind of uh, straddles so many worlds at the same time. So we have a, uh, we have a hundred plus dermats and then we have all of our skin clinics and then we have these entire range of FMCG products, the product line that we kind of cater to. So we have actually been able to use Instagram very effectively and each of its features to the fullest to say, how do we kind of leverage, where, where can we use our dermats to speak about certain content? 
where can we use customer testimonials to seed in how customers feel when they come into the clinic and experience a kaya journey or where, where can we leverage the entire play that happens with influencer experientials or then where can we actually seed in all of our product content so i think instagram has been gorgeous in the way it has kind of uh, helped us at every stage of this entire brand building journey that we are a part of and it plays a very huge role um, even in our entire crm gamut as well as our performance marketing gamut so actually like what shreya was saying it it touches every touch point of the customer's life like pre during post literally it's like end to end funnel is happening on instagram and the content we are creating here is what is then getting disseminated across our offline d2c e-commerce everything is kind of this becomes like a hub and spoke model for us so it's super critical and it's it's really working well for us thank you thank you uh, samyukta uh, thanks for sharing those insights uh, taking this question to to pragati and karthik to speak from a from an agent agency uh from the dimension of an agency but i'll i'll add i'll top it up a little more and talk about uh, the instagram messaging use cases uh we are seeing uh every day we seeing many people shopping and and seeking support in addition to engaging and uh, we we just heard that from from um uh, shreya and and samyukta kind of kind of uh, summarizing that and sharing their experiences uh that it's it's gone beyond engagement uh what do you think and uh, i'll uh, pragati i would start with uh, uh, taking the question to you what do you think is the best way to support them at scale when using instagram messaging as a channel uh thank you thank you so much for the question i think i uh, just to start off i completely agree with what uh, the team has been saying till now i think instagram the evolution of instagram in india and the way it's impacted consumer behavior at such right it's been brilliant right like we as a collective had never thought that we would be posting picture of the dinner that we're going to take right uh, that we're eating and that people are going to react to it and that's actually going to make us a mini celebrity of sorts that who would have thought of that right but i think instagram as a medium has really moved from being a medium to express yourself right like this is what i am this is what i do this is my lifestyle so that medium of aspiration and it's it's kind of climbed that ladder of relatability and now it it's um it's at the right place where you can even shop on instagram and now like like you know i think somebody was mentioning that customer care complaints which was something that we would always think of as a you know i mean uh, sorry to say this but you know you would when you had good compliments to give you would go to instagram and you would say wow i want to buy that and i want to you know buy this pair of shoes i love it i completely resonate with the brand and when you when you had some nasty brutal things to say you would go to you know <laughs> twitter but that bridge i feel like is collapsing right now right because the audience set of instagram is growing and therefore audience the audience there want to do everything on instagram right get inspired by and if i am not happy with something i want to come and you know find a solution there right so i think that whole journey is getting completed right and uh, so coming to the question that you asked uh, i think uh, i think it's brilliant in the way that the automation and the you know uh, it's going to of the instagram messenger platform the opportunities it's going to give to us right so not only uh, i mean i'm just going back to i think one of the points that shreya was making that it's and samyukta was making that it's going to uh, impact every uh, every stage of the funnel right from the exploration stage where i can go to the now i can like click on a story and i can be directed to Uh, explore the whole range right so for example if i were to be one of the brands that we work on is mns right if i were to and they have a winter collection and they launch a red sweater which i see on my instagram story and i go and click on it now mns can send me a message saying that hey this is a discount coupon for your next purchase or it can also which is a more instant gratification kind of a thing that they can do or they can also do a long term thing where they can tell me that hey this sweater looks best with this pair of boots or you know this a uh, uh, pair of pants and i can buy the whole look right and that that solves the pain point for me right because i some a lot of people who are buying into Uh, who are buying a product they also want to buy a full look right when it comes to fashion so it solves that problem for me right or if i were to talk about a different category uh say like if we do a lot of movie marketing so if, uh, for example if there is something like a matrix 
uh, resurrection that is going to release, right? And if you want to do like a promo of, uh, uh, you know, matrix resurrection, you take the social feed and you convert that into matrix. For example, if all the posts look the same and they have one different messaging, right? And the, the, the trick is that you have to go to the right post, which is the right pill, right? And if you click, if you comment on that particular post, only then will you get a discount coupon, right? right? So, so the fact that through your comment, your comments and the journey there can be custom, uh, can be automated. And the discount coupon is only available to the person who clicks or comments the right thing. It doesn't have to be done manually anymore, right? So that is really really cool right it can really open up uh, avenues and, and of course i'm not going into the regular things that you can do that you can explore the product portfolio you can set up the whole support system right like like for the for the longest time i think uh, the problem that we have uh, not a problem it's it's a lot of labor that we had put in that every time a customer or a audience on our social media is giving us a compliment one person has to go and you know reply to it right or you you want to heart it right but now you can just automate that right or if there is a complaint and you you can bucket it and you can uh, sort that problem so those are of course the first level things that you can do with this but there is so much more right so there is so much more about a campaign that you can do right for uh, I mean, just um uh, say, for example, if there is something like, uh, um, you know, like uh, we work on a sexual wellness brand, right, and uh, score, and uh, a lot of women in India, I, I think the stat is somewhere uh, close to 70%. 70% of women in India actually don't experience orgasm, right? And score for one has a, uh, has a lot of pleasure products that you know they they offer right so and again sex sex and intimacy is a very private conversation that i'm not going to have on a social media or you know have anywhere else i want a very one to one chat on it right so i can again this is again an opportunity that we can use that handle and create have those one to you know use the messenger and have those one to one uh, conversations with the audience about what they need the most, right? And when they need the most. So a lot of, you know, I think it can be completely plugged into different stages of the funnel, whether it's exploration, whether it is consideration, whether it is reading more about the product for categories like say, such, such as Bosch, right? right, where you want to read and absorb more before you come to a conclusion or, and then lastly, when you want to just buy the product or, you know, you want to, uh, 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 complain about something. So I think it just plugs in everywhere in the funnel. So, yeah. It's, it's a powerful, powerful thing that Instagram has come up with. Thanks. Thanks, Pragati, for sharing that insight. So, Karthik, uh, takeaways from, from that conversation, instant gratification, it's a channel for giving compliments. Um, and uh, I, I recall one earlier conversation with Pragati where we were actually discussing how Instagram gradually is becoming the new Twitter for 18 to 35 uh, People over 35 go to Twitter to complain and people are 18 to 35 is probably coming on Instagram to complain. Uh, your experience, Karthik, in terms of how have you seen uh, the best way to support uh, at scale using Instagram as a, as a messaging channel? Right. Well, I got to tell you, uh, you have such brilliant minds on this panel. I'm going to absolutely hate you for making me go last after um, all, the, all the great points have been made. But I'm going to keep it short, right? I think um, so that we can, can move forward. Um, I, I love the point that uh, that Shreya made, which is, um, you know, today Instagram is a fantastic, fantastic tool for product discoverability. And I would have created many different attributes for Instagram three years back. This would not have been one of them. Right? Um, so that, that, that's a great takeaway for me. I'm just going generally by, uh, you know, how user behavior or my own you know, user behavior has changed on the platform, right? Today, I spend probably 4x more time on messaging on Instagram than I probably did two years back. So uh, automatically, I think this is going to sort of, uh, you know, translate into a, a brand and a user sort of an experience as well, right? And, um, uh, and Pragati made some wonderful use cases, so I'm not going to um, add to that. But I think, uh, you know, we're probably going to a stage, I'll just end by saying that we're probably going to go to a phase where uh, multiple research has showed us that people are more comfortable on Instagram through the messaging, uh, through, the, through the messaging part of it, right, than any other mode of communication. 
and uh, probably we are we are entering an era of you know conversation as content right and uh, that's probably what we need to move towards you know thanks thanks karthik for for the insights uh, shadu in terms of um, the the use cases that you have seen um, evolve on instagram messenger uh, instagram messaging uh, what are what are your thoughts in the way and how do you how do you see evolving or or how is adoption going to be in the in the shorter run in the longer and how are you seeing that adoption happening okay so uh, thanks thanks for uh, i think i've just been hearing a lot of points and probably you know uh, learning for me we were probably one of uh, you know uh, uh, the traditional uh, marketing guys who pro- who just moved on to a lot of so now you know after a long time i've uh, finally uh, moved on to more than half of my spends going on to digital so uh, see this is something that has we we've seen going in from the uh, you know moving from the traditional side a lot of consumer complaints coming in from food brands so first while my first while brand mother dairy we used to have uh, a lot of uh, you know food uh, queries coming in and especially during the pandemic when people wanted to have more uh, uh, know more about uh, where could they source their products from um, moving from there towards the other part of the so you know the biggest uh, boon i would say with uh, instagram messaging coming in is the seamless integration across campaigns so typically every time we do a campaign uh, led by influencers we see about 60 70% uh, hike in the, the kind of queries that are coming in uh, about the brand about in fact uh, going towards the other side not just the pre purchase but towards the post purchase journey where you know a lot of uh, we could aid people in uh, you uh, have handling a lot of different kinds of use cases like how do you create more recipes uh interesting ones to sort of uh, cozy up with the family and you know spending time with loved ones during the festive season and uh, uh so you know when people uh, so discoverability yes uh, you know more than probably uh, i would say about uh, uh, as reading this study about 80% of uh, people are now discovering new brands through insta and in fact even on that uh, stories is the biggest lead medium through where messaging has been started so more than half of that uh, coming in you know and insta messages starting off from stories so it, defi- it definitely takes a lot of load off my crm teams uh, the, uh, about you know and uh, it gives us much more uh, uh, better buckets to sort of uh, target with our consumers with and handle and take them on the post purchase journey further and ensure that they could probably you know look at the other. so when especially in our food categories when we are getting into new products and pds you know a lot of cross selling happens this way so we can probably yeah. link it link up you know an olive oil with a pasta which we recently launched so that helps in uh, more discoverability you know going forward in fact thanks thanks shadul thank you thank you for sharing those points uh, uh, we we spoke a lot about the use cases let's now talk about uh, the instagram messaging priorities and uh, the focus verticals where we are seeing maximum impact and uh, ek I'll, i'll take this question back to you uh, i mean talking about the various use cases on instagram messaging how do you think it can add value to an organization or or to a particular uh, vertical industry domain uh and which industry or vertical have you seen or you feel is going to benefit most from the instagram messaging uh thank you so much neil for raising this question and again like uh, like all the panelists mentioned uh, we have seen irrespective of the verticals across the customer journey uh, various use cases uh, where instagram messaging has been playing a great role uh telling or saying a very very cliche term which is conversational commerce that's what uh, it is enabling imagine a scenario where one on one conversation uh, with the store employee can be replicated in an online setting uh, and that's something which is true for every industry to be honest uh, but we have already seen some of the marquee players across different verticals uh, like d2c and e-commerce telco and tech uh edge tech so these are some of the verticals where we have seen all the marquee players have already integrated and seen some of the use cases being implemented 
but we have seen a huge tran huge traction in the fintech vertical where majority of the public and the private uh, banks uh, have already seen a great impact while generating the leads um, i think like that's because what pragati mentioned uh, consultative selling is one of the major use cases which can be leveraged by these banks and fintechs uh, again like because of consultative selling all the verticals which have products which are which have the key token value very high they need a consultative selling uh, because i will not buy a furniture uh, not before like asking so many queries but i can buy a shampoo or conditioner before having those queries uh, so i think like that's something which we have where we have seen a lot of uh, brands are already leveraging it but one of my personal favorites again going back to being a mom is the service vertical uh while i was searching for a photographer who can do a one year old photo shoot uh, this is something where messaging again played a great great role because i need so many details i have so many questions before before i hire a service or get a service so i think like service sector can definitely leverage a lot from uh, instagram messaging thanks thanks ekta for for the the points you shared and uh, taking taking this question now to to kartik kartik uh, uh you have to i mean you spoke about how the the evolution has happened in terms of the adoption that you've seen with the brands uh, so taking this question to you which of the brands you think is going to prioritize this and and you you have seen adoption or your your experiencing the scale happening uh, with this brands and of course I'll next I'll take this question to you pragati because you already had some examples that you that you shared so uh, kartik uh, I'll I'll start with you if you if you can share your experiences yeah you know generally when it comes to social conversations right um, i think we've seen a lot happening in the beauty and the personal care space like this is not traditionally one of those high buzz sort of categories but a combination of many things that has been discussed till now right a lot of creators playing in the space a lot of influencers content being created and all of that has led to a lot of conversation in any case happening across platforms right and uh, you know I, i can you know i was listening to samyukta's point on how this is amazing for a for a brand like kaya and i think they are uniquely placed right you can have conversations you can uh engage fix appointments clarify doubts right? multiple things can be done on a platform like this which, which makes it very unique thing so i think um personal care and 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 beauty probably is going to be uh there right at the top um but i also feel you know uh, at some level as we move more towards um uh this being the primary medium of of, of communication and when i say primary i mean like probably uh focus brands focusing less on the short form content they create and focusing more on a human plus uh machine sort of a conversation with uh with clients to manage scale i think you will probably see a lot of traction in um in a lot of consultative sales right like um you know brands which need that sort of consulting now i can think of a lot of uh technology brands from that perspective and i think that's uh, that's another area where i feel this will be huge um and also um, a lot of food brands right i mean i'm, I'm just dialing this back to um you know probably 8 9 years back right when um food brands were not necessarily uh, accessible you know to many of you if you were to have a conversation on um on different aspects of the product right so these are some of the categories that i'm i'm very excited about yeah yeah i will yeah Sorry, sorry, Neil. You were saying. No, no, please, please go ahead, Prakriti. So I actually, I I jumped in because I completely agree with what Karthik is saying. I think uh, my like top at top of my mind is also food because if anything goes wrong in the chocolate you're having or in the ice cream you're having, you're going to create like a ruckus and you're going to let the world know, right? So I think managing sentiment there, managing complaints there is very very important. to the and it directly leads to like it directly starts having an impact on the brand right because all the wrong things starts uh, start getting written about you so i think food industry is very uh, precarious that ways i think that's this will really come handy for them 
then uh, again like how kartik and ekta were saying i think in industries which are more problem solution like even kaya clinic like samyukta like how samyukta was saying if i have a problem and if i if that problem becomes uh, better or worse with the solution then i you know i will want to talk about it and plus they are also build a lot on authenticity and trust because i'm you know kind of coming to you with a problem so i want it solved if i'm losing hair and if i'm coming to you for a solution then i want that solution right i want to trust you for that or say like a lot of hospital chains or uh, you know wellness brands like practo and fine i think that for them also this becomes very important uh, then also i believe that uh, even you know brands that are uh, actually in a way i'm going to be covering all the brands because you know in a way like if you look at fashion brands if you look at beauty brands if you look at cosmetic industry right there the problem that they're solving is of closing the transaction right or if i have a problem then you know it's it's the conversation is more about delivery and replacement and what color should i choose so i think the conversation becomes different but the relevance still remains right or going back Absolutely. to what uh, what we were discussing earlier that even in uh, industry where you take you want to have multiple conversations like ekta was also saying that consultative right like something like a consumer durable you're not going to buy it at the drop of a hat you're going to think about it you're going to mull over it and then you're going to take a decision right so there the role that this platform can play is to uh, reengage reeducate compare you know all of those things right but in an industry where you need constant assurance uh, say like a health uh, insurance industry right you want to know if you're buying the right uh, product if if it's covered everything there essentially you're replacing that human being that you uh, you know that agent that you meet so i think it it does have a very wide spectrum of things that it can tap into but it i think the purpose will be different and how you use it will be different and like i already mentioned that something like a movie marketing client can use it but then it will be more engagement led because you want to capture the attention of the audience and then gratify him within the same nat native platform so so yeah i think it's immensely helpful but the purpose to, uh, will differ yeah thanks thanks pragati uh, samyukta I'll, i'll take this question to you of course because uh, everybody uh, kind of kind of spoke about what you had touched upon earlier and the impact that uh, is been felt in the in the health and beauty uh, domain so so wanted to hear from you in terms of how are you seeing the the adoption happening with kaya as a brand adopting this and and uh, driving it and the benefits that you're seeing from it yeah absolutely so thanks neel and thanks kartik thanks pragati <laughs> so i think um, yeah absolutely because for kaya again like i'm uh, you know we are in a position where and i don't think it's just kaya it's also other brands as well because one is you want to understand you know what you're offering you may have a problem or you may just want to get something as simple as a party peel done or a vampire facial done uh, these are just trending terms you may not really understand it but you definitely want to get on the bandwagon right uh there are a lot of questions plaguing your mind and then there's only so much the call center is able to then kind of uh, help explain like you run a performance marketing uh, campaign uh then it automatically goes to your website from there it goes to the call center the call center agent will give you x amount of information and then say okay now you come into the clinic uh meet the doctor and the doctor will then recommend basis your skin type etc you will get a personalized treatment you know made for you uh i suddenly see that with something like a dm automation of sorts kind of coming in uh you kind of cut through a lot, lot of refrap because it kind of eases the journey it becomes like an omni uh, you know channel thing where and if it's going to like learn if there's going to be so much of machine learning and you can humanize this entire experience because right now it's more like okay call us on this number we'll get back to you or you know write to us on this email id and we'll get back to you i don't think the instagram audience is actually waiting for people to get back to them like somebody was telling me they were doing some wedding lehenga shopping for their fiance and he said i wrote to i went to amazon found the vendor went to instagram dm'd the vendor because i wanted to buy it for her and then they got back to me two two days later which is not a bad tat if you ask me uh, but they had already lost out on that client because he had already moved on found somebody else who got back to him like pretty fast as compared to much larger vendor than say a boutique vendor sitting somewhere in lucknow so i think that's what is happening i think all the brands are spending so much of time effort to kind of get new customer and new audiences in but the minute you snooze on a platform like instagram you would actually end up losing 
so i do and i do see this working out very beautifully for all brands because you're and all you want to be done is you want to be heard it's a very human human need to just be heard and that i think pragati used the word assurance you know you want want somebody to handhold you and say hey you know you're in the right hands and we'll we'll guide you every step of the way but if you're going to take 2 hours 24 hours just to get back to to tell you a hi again i think that's where a lot of leakages and losses happening i see something like this beautifully kind of ensuring that the right audiences stick around with the right brand i think that brand stickiness is something i see really moving up with with this kind of automation uh, coming in thanks thanks samyukta so uh, my takeaway there is when you when you snooze on a channel like instagram you end up losing and um, uh, shreya uh, with puma has i mean as far as i can remember i have never snoozed on a on a channel like instagram so and your your engagement uh, is i mean is is rapidly growing uh, on this channel so so share please share some of the best practices that you have uh, uh, seen or the or the benefits that you've seen coming out of uh, instagram as a channel sure um so you know while everyone was talking i was actually thinking back to something we did at the beginning of this year um and of course the platform at that point was facebook messenger not instagram but i think the learnings are um you know very much applicable here as well um i think we had a very unique challenge where we were launching this extremely high end running shoe um in india right and it had various variants you had uh, one for like elite serious marathon runners you had something for an amateur runner who just wanted comfort you had a specific shoe for women because their feet are structured differently you had something for stability so people over pronate under pronate right and this was the time when we were just going into the second lockdown right um usually running as a category is something that everybody thinks you need to go to the store and try the shoe before you buy right and here we were in the peak of a lockdown and we had to sell um you know this new extremely high end shoe and communicate about it for the first time right so um at that point we reached out to the facebook team and um we came up with this really interesting solution where um we basically had this messenger bot with virat kohli as the face of the bot and he basically asked consumers a series of simple questions and helped them find the the right shoe for them right based on gender and uh, running preferences what issues they face where they run how often they run things like that right a uh, very simple very uh, basic bot based questions and obviously obviously immediate answers right and it ended with um, you know based on the shoe that you were finally allotted the link to shop the shoe right there or based on your pin code the nearest store that you could go and shop from right and um of course the results to me were very interesting because we were in a age where we were talking about attention spans of 14 seconds and people not you know wanting to engage further than that but we saw a really huge completion rate right and this would have been close to a one minute survey right so there were a lot of people who actually completed the survey and for me i think um in terms of messenger and automation this ticked off two very important check boxes right and um i'm not even going to the customer complaint and customer query bucket because that's a given for me i think the two big ones that it checked off in a really major way one was personalization right i mean we've seen the entire circle of you know small businesses and then large businesses and we're coming back again to talking about how small businesses are growing a lot on instagram and part of that is the personalization factor right um and i think for me this was a big tick box in terms of personalization somebody is helping you find your accurate shoe um and were doing it virtually right and i think the second thing that it ticked off which was very big for me is the number of clicks right i mean we all know this that the more number of times you redirect a consumer from platform to platform or page to page that's how high your drop off was right but within the simple chat you'd solved everything from this you know like awareness to product discoverability to ability to shop right in a in a one minute chat so i think for me um you know while customer queries and complaints are given i think um messaging and automated messaging uh ticks off especially when you link in the product discoverability and the shoppability angle right uh, ticks off these two very big checkpoints which is personalization and um being able to complete an entire end to end transaction with minimal number of clicks and redirects right so i think for me um this was a big learning and it's definitely something that we would want to experiment with further um right on, on the messaging and automated base because i think it it gave me the confidence that um we 
we could engage with consumers in a longer meaningful way rather than those 14 second 15 second or um you know times that we we take now as a given in which we need to consume or like convert the consumer right so i think um for me this was a a, a big tick box in terms of how to use this platform and how to use this feature going forward thanks Shia. thanks for sharing those learning very very interesting uh, points there uh, Taking, taking the question to Shradul in terms of uh, uh, your experience, I mean, you, you mentioned that your digital spends have just gone up. Uh, uh, your experience of, of using Instagram and, and where does Instagram messaging fit in your, in your priority of order uh, where you're seeing um, the, the adoption happening and your expectation from it? Um, I just remembered, in fact, uh, while you know listening to all of you, uh, there was a, an instance uh, some months back where somebody, uh, a parent wanted to know, so their kid was suffering from cerebral palsy. And uh, we got a query on one of our pages about, uh, uh, she read somewhere from one of the communities, it wasn't scientifically proven yet, but uh, uh, something that olive oil is uh, good for kids with suffering from. Uh, policy. So yeah, so you know, she wanted to know more on it. We did not have a scientific claim, a hard claim on that fact, but then we got it tested and we, we sort of reached out to some of our R&D executives and the team. And you know, this, uh, we, we uh, obviously gave out some sort of uh, counseling uh, to, the, to the lady. The one thing which, you know, uh, probably take away from that was the level of customization that consumers are now reaching out for. And as businesses and categories evolve, especially food and ready to cook, ready to eat, uh, you know, everybody, they're looking for more and more ways to re, uh, create, create and recreate their own uh, recipes, grandmother's recipes, uh, some new, uh, you know, uh, sort of uh, things thrown into the mix. So we learn from them. We can probably, you know, uh, take, take it to the next level of customization for each and every one of them. So I would say probably if in case, let's say, you know, if somebody wants to have those kind of conversations, it's pretty, I mean, uh, we don't have to depend upon, uh, you know, a, a customer, hiring an army of customer service uh, representatives so that. So that really helps in cutting down, cutting down uh, uh, of course, costs, one, uh, response times, yes. And then uh, sort of because, so a lot, you know, quarter of, of our sales are, is now coming in from e -com. So the first, uh, and uh, in fact, Insta is the biggest, uh, uh, I mean, shift to us for us uh, in terms of marketing spends now. So it's only relevant for us that uh, uh, you know, automation of Insta messaging is you know, the next level for us in, in our CX journey. Thanks, thanks, Shadul. Uh, taking the conversation now from um, automate, um, Instagram messaging to bringing automation on Instagram messaging and uh, Shay, I'll, I'll take this question first to you because you have already been practicing uh, automation, uh, automating the, the conversation flow on, on Instagram. So, so taking the question first to you, um, uh, do you think we should make the, the bots on Instagram messaging intelligent or just transactional? And um, uh, which of them do you think is a, um, a future failure recipe? I think I'll break this into two parts. Um, the first is where we are now, right? Um, I think where we are now, I think the first step really is to conquer is transactional. I think even if I look at um, my own customer um, service queries that come in and, and the ones that are um, call center sort of, you know, fields on a daily basis, I think 90% of them are very, very basic. Um, where is my order? Um, when is my return getting picked up? Uh, when am I getting my refund, right? And I think um, literally the first stepping stone or the first block to really get right is transactional, right? So if you can have um, a way to ensure that these three or four basic questions are answered. I think for now, 90% um, of uh, most brands in terms of customer queries should be sorted, right? And um, I have seen situations where if you, if 
you know there there are a lot of debates and questions on the intelligence of these bots and whether um they can mimic um intelligent conversations with human beings at least for now right my recommendation would be a keep it transactional and b have a backup of um you know a human being also because in case the bot is not able to you know answer certain specific questions you should have a backup and um completely relying 100% on intelligent bots might be a recipe for disaster but like i said you know this is the now i i would like to believe that i'm extremely optimistic about the tech that we would develop in the near future right and hopefully we would get to a point where you may not need human interaction at all um and you know hopefully you would uh, be able to interact with intelligent bots and um you know solve uh, simple to more complicated questions that way um for the moment though at least the versions of tech that i have seen um i think it's it's safer to take it one step at a time and start with a transactional bot have um the access to a to a human being if if needed right you would still 90% of your queries like i said would be solved with a transactional bot right i think most of us have experienced that of of the percentage of queries that come in uh, to to call centers every day most of them can very much be replaced with um with a simple bot right um so for now i think my reco would be until we develop tech that is so intelligent that that we can completely do away with uh, the human element um uh, we stick to a transactional plus a, 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 a you know human at the end if needed for your last mile uh, very complicated uh, queries going forward like i said i'm extremely hopeful i'm i'm always an optimist when it comes to uh, how technology has developed so my hope is that in the future uh, we would develop intelligent bots that can um answer any kind of question that the consumer poses thanks thanks shia uh, taking this question to to pragati pragati you have you have been working with multiple brands from multiple verticals where have you seen or or you have felt the need for the the automation to be uh, whether the bot should be more intelligent or um, is it it should be more transactional and even if you have seen anything uh where different verticals need to adopt differently or different brands have adopted it differently so if you can share those experiences with us yes yeah, so uh so talking about the bot uh, so i completely agree with shreya actually i had a different answer but uh, i think i will change my answer because what she said is extremely pragmatic uh so right now so we have used bot in different ways right of course the first i mean the the very basic way of using it is in um, in you know in in completing the transaction but we have also used it in the past uh, and this is bot in general and i'm not talking about just instagram messenger a bot here but we have used automation earlier in uh, as part of campaigns right like a few years back we had uh, for a movie we were promoting we did a promotional activity where actually the user becomes uh, uh, a part of um, so basically the bot is a terrorist and you the user is the one who's inter interrogating the terrorist right so it was a great engagement uh, activity that we did and it created a lot of pr but it was uh, i mean the purpose of that uh, the engagement activity was to create conversation right so it did that but on an uh, now coming back i think um, right now i will completely agree with shreya that the purpose of a bot is to uh, actually uh, uh, create convenience in the pain points that consumers are feeling right now right like am i uh, can i you know can i get a better version of this product yes the bot can suggest to you can i create a better look yes the bot can suggest to you can i get a consultation so all of those things are very real very now that we can you know the the need states that the bot can tap into but going in the future i think uh, if we were to think about 10 years from now right how experience is developing or evolving right we are entering the uh, world of metaverse right and there i think the bot will become a very important part of a marketer you know a marketing strategy and i'll tell you why at one point when uh, you know when uh, 
our uh, you know most of our communication was through television right we used to think of brand personalities in terms of ki acha us ad mein kaisi personality hogi right we will think of two uh, i mean we'll create a brand world there but that but now with the coming of social that has changed right now the social personality because your brand has to talk on social every day needs to have a perspective on most things every day you need to create a more flexible personality more fluid personality while it's living up to the brand essence that we stand for the tonality has to be a little broader and little fluid right now when bot becomes the industry hygiene right or it becomes a more important part of our lives the we'll have to in you know we'll have to give it a personality it will start behaving like more like brand right it will go beyond a transaction and that is a safe assumption to make because Uh, something that you because that is how brand will then start differentiating itself right so some days the bot will help you in a consumer prob in a problem that you're facing some days it will just be there to chat with you right on some random it will i i think the movement will be that people will want to like how we use social right now to everyday connect with our audience i think that role will start to uh, start getting played by bot but in a more personalized in a more one to one way right where i'm respecting your privacy but i'm also becoming your friend right so i think intelligence empathy all of those things will start you know percolating into that bot but of course till we achieve that technology and till we achieve that le uh, level of finesse it is a journey we will bots will be more transactional in nature yes but i think going forward brands will also start giving more attention to bots creating the journeys creating personalities creating uh, using them to uh, shape brand perception i think all of that is a natural uh, journey for a bot yeah thanks thanks pragati for for sharing that uh, we are we are a little over time so we'll just take uh, one one question from the from the audience that we have here and uh, kartik I'll, i'll take it to you first uh, that we'll make it up to you uh, uh, so so in your opinion uh, rate them in order of priority um, automation first experience first social first right yeah B by the way before i answer that question um, i have to say thanks to samyukta i googled what uh, vampire facial is and i'm totally mind blown <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's completely fascinating um okay cool so i i, I don't know um me if it is necessarily um, a zero sum game right um but uh, you know to me if if i can take the liberty of you know not answering from these three options but generally probably even going back to your previous question right it is uh, uh, i think all three can coexist and in my opinion see i i don't necessarily share the the optimism uh, that that shreya does for um, um, for a, for a human less sort of a, a engagement that'll, that'll be very scary and um, I'm, i'm not even sure if if that's one of the goal posts we're going to right um i think uh, uh, most certainly we need a uh, transaction uh, transaction is probably going to be what the the bare minimum the execution excellence sort of lies in and uh, but at the same time um i think the the intelligence part of it needs to be needs to be developed you know over a period of time right and you're going to have these face palm moments whenever you're dealing with nlp like once in 100 times for sure but that shouldn't deter us from sort of moving towards that i don't think i have answered your question have i no you have you have and and thanks for thanks for sharing that and uh, i'll i'll now take the same question to to samyukta in terms of uh, uh, how would how would you rate them uh, in your order of priority uh, automation first experience first social first yeah so okay to begin with kartik you are most welcome to kaya any time for the vampire facial so yeah <laughs> um so neel i'll answer your question i think experience first i'll echo what shreya and pragati had to say that uh, it has to be transactional first because it would be scary like kartik said if it became humanless uh, because i think the kind of industries we are working on and um, i think ekta was talking a lot about uh, consultative commerce it does require a lot of experience lot of learning and then a huge amount of uh, human touch and empathy in order to be able to um, you know actually explain and handhold the customer through this entire journey um, having said that i think it can save a lot of 
human hours and the kind of uh, manual intervention that is needed right now. I think Pragati spoke about something as small as just hearting a comment. But, uh, you know, as a brand, you end up panicking because you're like, okay, 10 people have, uh, you know, said something nice about me, but then I wake up the next morning and, and nobody has gone and even liked it because that's humanly impossible, right? Like for any agency or any client to keep up at that pace in which consumers are interacting on the platform, it's, it's literally virtually impossible to do that. I think something like a, something like a bot would, would be able to really save all of us a lot of time and effort that right now we are unable to do so as an industry, we are unable to handle. So I think that's one big part. For a uh, brand like Kaya, uh, even something as simple as uh, you know book an appointment or taking somebody to your website to book a web consult. Uh, we have an AI assessment tool. So guiding somebody to just go there get their skin assessed and then that will then automatically recommend what kind of products and services that you can pick up. So ensuring that you don't lose the customer and you actually guide them properly and this will require, it, it is still very transactional in nature. Even something as small as say you're running a contest and people do get very angsty when you don't respond to them immediately, when they don't get their gratification, etc. I think in the food industry, etc., it gets even worse, like Ragati was talking about. It does get a lot worse than people are very quick to respond quick to put up a lot of nasty comments. I think that whole uh, Twitterification that's happening on Instagram is very real. It's happening to all of us. We're all dealing with it. I think a bot will really help curb a lot of, because there's so much of goodwill and equity that you build as a brand and it just requires one, two of these negative comments to kind of, uh, you know, zap the entire business. I think a bot will genuinely help in a lot of, lot of little ways that a lot of little things that bother us on a daily basis as organizations, as brands. I think a bot will definitely help streamline those things immediately. And then of course, so to answer your question, experience first, then it should get into automation. And finally, we will get into the social first. Thank you. Thanks for that learning, Samyukta. Uh, Shradul, now that you're, uh, you're kind, of, kind, of, kind of planning and, and putting more spend behind digital um, Instagram messaging and automation Instagram, I mean, how do how do you rate them in in terms of uh, priority in order of priority uh, automation first experience first social first and interestingly i'll next take this question to ekta uh, in terms of your thoughts uh, and that way hear it from from uh, how does how's instagram look at it or what is instagram's vision in terms of automation first experience first or social first so shadul uh, over, over to you yeah, so I think I would uh, probably take, uh, you know, uh, one step at a time and say, yes, automation first. However, compared to other platforms, uh, Insta is a much more human uh, kind of, uh, you know, portal. So it's like, you know, it's my, if you were to compare it to, you know, a messenger or a regular uh, CX platform, I would say it's more experience. And uh, I would put in a bit more, uh, you know, because a lot of our listening tools, uh, you know, help us enable us to uh, look for the white spaces within the, you know, categories that we operate in. So it just sort of uh, enables us to listen to our consumers better and probably, you know, the first step is to eliminate all the, uh, you know, the usual suspects, the product complaints, uh, you know, availability uh, problems, discoverability issues. And then, yes, maybe, you know, in that sense, I would uh, want to experiment with it because Insta allows you to go a little more, uh, I mean, uh, probably go out on a, uh, you know, uh, spree and say consumers would probably forgive you for that one in one in a hundred kind of uh, error that comes in from a brand. So that's, I think that's there for me. Thank you. Thanks, Shadul. Uh, Ekta, taking the same question to you. So uh, I think I'll take Kartik's route and choose none of these, but users first. Uh, so I think if, if anybody has a use case, it can be different for different verticals and based on what are they trying to achieve. For example, we have seen, like we have seen, again, I'm taking some Yuta's example, but health and beauty, if you are going there, I think it's more personalized experience. So it's going to be experience first. Uh, but if, if I am a bank and I'm generating leads, uh, I don't care really about the experience and the social. I'll go for automation first. And similarly, if if I am going about an engagement, uh, I'll go with social first. So I think like depending upon what is the end goal, uh, I think users first should be the lens. And that's where like we can prioritize all these three things. And definitely 
make it both as everyone agreed transactional plus intelligent uh, but definitely not agentless uh, i think like that will be scary thanks thanks ekta for sharing that uh, we we have gone much beyond our our allotted time but that was expected from the power pack panel that we had today so so thanks thank you everyone for for sharing your learning it was an extremely rich and learning full session for all of us i hope uh, our audience have have uh, experienced the same and uh, thanks everyone uh, for being a part of this panel today thank you thank you so thanks, much neil. thank you neil thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. learning for thank us thank you neil